All right, so here we are up to part two now. Sorry about that. Uh, since my account got hacked, I only get 40 minutes where everybody else gets an hour. So uh, we will finish the recording and uh, the PowerPoint with our guided notes. We are up to number five. So here we go. I will start sharing with uh, our PowerPoint. So we left off at four, we're moving into five. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infam infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury except in cases arising in land or naval forces or in the militia when in actual service in time of war or public danger. So what the first part is saying is no person shall be held to answer for a crime without a um, being indicted. To be indicted means to be charged, physically charged with a crime. You cannot just uh, arrest somebody without charging them with a crime. All right, so let's move now to the second half. Uh, nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be put twice in jeopardy or life and limb, no double jeopardy nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself. You have the right to remain silent. We learned about that with Arizona uh, versus Miranda. Uh, nor be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. You must have due process. And we'll just talk about that a little bit more. Nor shall private property be taken uh, for public use without just compensation. They can't, government can't just take your land because they want to, because they need the space. They have to, uh, we'll learn about what that term means in just a moment. So here we go. So some of, there's five different things. The first thing we're gonna write down is, uh, here we go, let's use this list right here, all right? We're gonna do number one, right to a grand jury. All right. Uh, share. Uh, there we go. All right, so first one we got is a right to a grand, oops, where'd it go? Right to a which means you must be indicted, charged with a crime, all right? So now you can be arrested for a burglary, but you're not charged with the crime of burglary until you are formally put in front of a grand jury. So arresting and being charged are two different things. All right, let's go to our second one. All right, no double jeopardy and then no self-incrimination. We'll do two at a time on this one. No double jeopardy and no self-incrimination. No double Jeopardy can't be charged for the same crime twice. All right, and then no self incrimination. You have the right to remain silent. All right, anything you say can we will be used against you in the court of law. All right, so we know that one. Let's go to our fourth one now. We have the right to due process means you have this whole right to a trial, everything. And then the last one we're going to learn is eminent domain. So we got the right to due process and eminent domain for our last two. And I'll explain what eminent domain means. 
right to do process the right to a trial and proper treatment. All right, you can't just be arrested and thrown in jail. You have, there's a whole way they have to do things. And then this last thing I said, the term is eminent domain. And you need to know what that means. And that's what it, the other thing was. Must receive financial compensation for property taken. All right, now, all that's saying is that if the government absolutely has to have your land, let's say for instance, your home sits right where a new um, highway is going, all right? And they need that in order, they can't go around your house, they have to go through it. So they say, we'll give you $5,000 for your house. Is that fair compensation? No. They say if your house is worth $200,000, they have to give you $200,000. All right. Fair must receive financial compensation for property taken. Let's add fair financial compensation. All right. So sorry if I didn't put that in there. If you're writing, just uh, uh, make sure you have it in there. It's got to be fair. It's got to be just. It can't just be any dollar figure. It's got to be what it's worth. All right. And we just said we're going to use this again. Well, we'll just tell you the whole thing. We'll take this whole line right here and just duplicate it because this is what it means. Control C, and we're going to take it down here to what does I plead the fifth mean? No self incrimination. You have the right to remain silent. If you wanted to add to it, you don't have to testify against yourself. That's important. You just sit there and shut up. Don't say anything if you ever get arrested because you could end up saying something stupid that's going to haunt you. All right. You have the right to remain silent. Be silent. Now, unless you're guilty and you got blood all over and the guns in your hand, you know, <laughs> I did it. But, you know, Make sure you're, uh, uh, you know you have the right to remain silent. Again, eminent domain must receive financial, fair financial compensation for property taken. Control C, Control V, oops, Control V, there we go. All right, and let's go look at our slides to make sure that these match what I've just shared with you. So let's go to all right, double jeopardy. Can't be charged with the same crime twice. Self-incrimination. You can't be forced to testify against yourself, right? To remain silent. I think we got that pretty good. What does this mean? Both of these are part of due process. A trial is part of due process. All, so we just want to make sure we're understanding that. Grand jury, the indictment, being charged with a crime, that's part of due process. All right. Self-incrimination means a defendant cannot be forced to testify against himself. All right. We got that. I plead the fifth. Miranda warning. Hopefully that's drilled into your heads now. The other one is eminent domain. Now, what it means, the government has the right, the right of a government or its agent to expropriate private property for public use with payment of compensation. All right, so the government has that right to do it. They can take it if it's absolutely vital, but they have to pay you properly. So I think we've worded both of those correctly based upon the way we've already put them in there. So if you want to add anything else to help yourself, that's fine, but I'm going to leave those as is, and we'll go on to our next slide, which should be number six. Oops, too fast. Here we go. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed 
which district shall have been previously ascertained by law to inform to the nature of the cause of the accusation. Huh. Well, first off, speeding public trial. I think we got that one. Uh, and you must be informed of your accusation. They have to tell you what your charge is. All right, to be confronted by the witnesses against them, you have to be able to, to see your witness. Uh, you're the person who's uh, charged, who's said you're, you did it. Uh, to have a compulsory process for obtaining witnesses, you're allowed to have your own witnesses. And to have assistance of counsel for his defense, you have a right to a lawyer. That's Gideon versus Wainwright. All right. And uh, the confronting the witnesses was in Ray Galt. All right. He didn't even get a chance to, to the guy who was accusing him of the prank calls and stuff. He didn't even get a chance to confront them. All right. So here's our list over here. Guarantees a citizen a speedy trial, a good jury, a lawyer, and a chance to confront witnesses. So let's look at our worksheet. And we have the four protections. So you have a right to a lawyer. Law, whoops, lawyer, right to a lawyer. Um, oh, a speedy trial. Fair and speedy trial. And right to a jury. Uh, let's see. Let's look for two more. Oh, a good jury. That was the other one. So I already added that in. Oh, a chance to confront your witnesses. That was the last one. So let's move one answer. Uh, oops. X, we'll move that one down here. Control V. All right, fair and speedy trial, right to a, not just a jury, it's got to be a good jury, or what word you might have heard, impartial, meaning that if you're a white guy, you can't have a whole bunch of black people on the jury. Most people would say that's not fair. You got to have a mix, all right? Uh, and then lastly is... Oh my gosh, I forgot already. Uh, oh, to confront your witnesses, duh. And then lastly, a chance to confront your accuser and to present, oops and your own witnesses. All right, very good. Uh, hold on real quick, my wife is calling. Uh, let me just pause this for just a moment. Uh, hey, I'm still in my, I'm still in my meeting. All right, here we go. So, all right, we'll jump through these last few real quickly here, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So let's get back to our slideshow. <clears throat> all right, so when you have a civil trial, up until a certain point, you didn't necessarily get a jury. You could have just a, a judge over it. With this, they wanted to make sure that there were jury trials in civil cases, all right? Number eight says no cruel and unusual punishment, all right? What does that mean? It means excessive bail shall not be required nor excessive fines imposed. 
if you're jaywalking, it's a hundred dollar fine. You can't get a five thousand dollar fine on jaywalking. Jaywalking is crossing the street illegally. The fine has to match the penalty. All right, you can't go to jail for you know thirty years for running your car into somebody's home maybe i don't know maybe you could get 30 years for that i'm just trying to say the certain crimes you can't just punish them like trying to throw the book at them just because you don't necessarily like someone if you uh run a stop sign 30 days in jail whatever i don't know it's got to fit the crime so here we go we'll do seven and eight real quick So seventh, uh, jury trial, oops, jury trials in civil cases, and then no cool or un- No cruel or unusual, unusual, unusual punishments. I think that's spelled right. All right, which means no excessive fines and punishment must fit the crime all right let me i haven't opened it up for questions in a while so uh we got two more let's go ahead and take questions if any you've had any questions over the last 10 or so questions anyone all right we'll finish this up then and we'll be done for today so here we go Nine and 10. Now nine simply just says, uh, if there's other rights that the people should have that we haven't assigned, we must make sure that they have them. So the ninth man says other rights exist and these, and the government can't deny these rights. Just because these rights aren't listed doesn't mean you don't have other rights too. So uh, what it says in its uh, original, the enumeration in the constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny others retained by the people. So this where here, the black and white box, that's what you literally want to type in or write in. So just because these rights are listed uh, doesn't mean you don't have other rights. All right, so let's go ahead and fill that one out. just because there are all these rights listed comma doesn't mean that you don't have other rights that are not listed. Now, this is important to understand why they put this in here. Because the Fed, while the anti federalists wanted these eight rights up here first, you needed to have um, the federalists were like, well, hey, if we only guarantee certain rights, there might be other rights that go unguaranteed. So the federalists asked to have this amendment put in there that just because it's not written down doesn't mean that they that they aren't there. All right, so let's move on to number 10 then, and we will be done with this. So number 10, the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution or prohibited to it by the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. What these are is powers reserved for the states or people. All right, the whole concept of federalism is what we're going to be learning about at the very end of this course. That's the last thing we cover here. 
And so let's move back to our notes and add in number 10, defend powers not for the government are delegated or reserved for the states or the people. Now, think about it. This is where we start talking about like marriage and divorce. You know, they could go through and start trying to come up with all kinds of extra rights, but don't worry, we got the states for all those rights. So uh, now they might end up doing a marriage amendment to try to declare marriage only a man and a woman, but other than that, um, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, that's the only way the government would step in to assert itself. Most of these other powers, we're gonna learn about all these powers when we talk about the states, there's lots of them. But these were set aside strictly for the states or for the people themselves, rather than the government to uh, be in control of everything. So this gets us to the end of our notes here. Let's go back to our slideshow and see if we have any last slides here. So we're gonna talk about, oh, I gotta write, write the word federalism in there too. Nope, that's it. So we'll do the review next week. We're not gonna actually have a quiz this week. Uh, we're gonna do a prep works this week and that will be your grade. Uh, the quiz will be next week. Um, so I've got a worksheet on Monday, review on Tuesday and quiz on Wednesday next week. So when we review, we'll be finished off the slideshow at that point. Other than that, uh, that is everything. So let's go back to, I guess that's it. We don't need anything else. So that'll stop the share at this point. I will unmute any last questions for anybody. Anybody have any questions? Uh, let's see. Will this be posted on Moto? Yes, it will. As always, I post the videos so you can watch them back at your own leisure too. And oh, is that your little sister? Hi, little sister. All right, any other questions? All right, if not, have a great rest of your day. Sorry that went a little long today, um, but uh, I'll try to get this hour thing fixed so that I can get the recording straight through. Other than that, have a great rest of your day. We will see you. You got worksheets and prep works the rest of the week. Uh, quiz next Wednesday. Have a great rest of your week. All right, bye guys. I just realized that my headphones don't have a, um, a microphone piece, so it was like silent the whole time. Oh my goodness, that must have been rough for you.